a hurdy gurdy. But with a guitar fretboard, can that be done? Let's find out. The hurdy gurdy, a marvelous medieval instrument with a very distinct tone that I fell in love with from the first time I saw and heard it. Sadly, I already struggled with learning to play the guitar, so I didn't want to try and learn another instrument on top of that. That's where the idea for the hybrid hurdy-gurdy guitar was born. A hurdy-gurdy, but with a guitar fretboard. The hurdy-gurdy is a unique string instrument that creates sound through a hand-turned crank, which turns a rosin wheel that rubs against the strings. This wheel operates in a manner similar to the bow of a violin or cello, producing single notes that resemble the violin. Hurdy Gurdy typically has two to four melody strings that can be disabled and enabled manually so that you can choose to play on only one string at a time or several strings uh, at the same time. The strings have a thin layer of cotton on them to give a more refined tone. Melodies are played using a keyboard that presses tangents small wedges typically crafted from wood or metal against one or more strings to alter their length and hereby also their pitch. Like many acoustic instruments, it features a soundboard and a hollow body that amplifies the vibrations of the strings. Typically the hurdy-gurdy include several drone strings that provide a steady pitch background to the melody, creating a sound reminiscent of bagpipes. One or more gut strings, known as trumpet, usually pass over a buzzing bridge, referred to as the chien, which produces a distinct percussive buzzing sound as the wheel is turned by the player. Most of the video clips of the hurdy-gurdy in this first section is by kind courtesy of Nigel Eaton. Thank you very much. He is a British multi-instrumentalist and composer, best known for playing the hurdy-gurdy, which he started when his father, Christopher Eaton, began making them. Link to his channel in the description below. The hurdy-gurdy is believed to have evolved from fiddles in Europe or the Middle East before the 11th century. Early forms like the organistrum were large instruments played by two people, producing sound through uh, crank and keys. The organistrum was uh, primarily used in monastic settings. Over time the instrument was made smaller for solo play and evolved into the Symphonia, which had a more practical keyboard. During the Renaissance, the hurdy-gurdy gained popularity, fe featuring a buzzing bridge that created a distinctive sound. By the late 17th century, changing musical taste diminished its status, associating it with lower social classes. However, in the 18th century, it regained favor among the nobility, with notable compositions written for it. Variations of the hurdy-gurdy spread across Central Europe, though many times became extinct by the early 20th century. The tradition continues today with revivals across Europe, and a resurgence in various musical styles. Some popular YouTube hurdy-gurdy channels are Paddy Gurdy, 
who primarily focuses on contemporary music, often incorporating modern styles and influences into her performances. Annie Hurdy-Gurdy, who often features medieval and folk music, showcasing traditional pieces on the Hurdy-Gurdy. And Noel Kristen Bodin, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, who primarily plays medieval and folk music, with a focus on historical pieces and traditional styles. If you want to build your own hurdy-gurdy, check out the nerdy-gurdy, made by a Dutch engineer. The parts can be made with a laser cutter, or you can buy it as a kit. On a traditional hurdy-gurdy, you disable or enable the strings manually. Since I wanted to be able to play it like a guitar, the first thing I had to figure out was a way to control each individual string. Since one hand would be busy on the fretboard and the other on the crank, I imagined a control mechanism on the crank that could pull each string down on the wheel and bridge using keys. More on this in part 5 in this video series. This was definitely one of the trickiest parts to get working and I also had a bad accident with a utility knife working on this part, which gave me an involuntary 10 week break in the building. I was just beginning to learn 3D design in Autodesk Fusion and having played a little with a 3D printer, you can see the video about a 3D printed violin up here, I decided to go this route. At first I thought about making the whole instrument from scratch, but ended up deciding to alter or convert an old guitar, since there was already a lot of work to be done. That of course meant that I first had to model the guitar in Fusion. More on this in part 2 of this video series. With the wheel taking up a lot of space, not fitting inside the guitar, I would have to make a new angled fretboard to raise the strings to the height of the wheel. This turned out to be quite the endeavor, uh, more on this also in video part 2. Since precision is not my strong suit, and an instrument typically is an organic thing which moves with the temperature, humidity and so on. I made it so that both the wheel position, the bridge saddles and the tailpiece could be adjusted. More on this in video part 3 about the wheel and video part 4 about the bridge, tailpiece and string holders. Since I like to mix art and music and the name of my channel now is Arifari Guitars, I surely had to make the instrument artistic in some way. More on this in video part 6. Part 6 will also be about a guitar support and a strap, as to make the hurdy-gurdy guitar better positioned and more playable. The hurdy-gurdy guitar isn't completed yet, Still some adjustments and alterations to be made. But I definitely have high hopes that one day soon it will be playable and very cool sounding. Fingers crossed. Here you can see the almost finished design in Fusion. And here is a little clip of testing it out with just one string. When I get there and get some time to practice and learn to actually play on it, part 7, the final video in this series, will be a showcase and demonstration. Please consider liking this video and if you want to follow my adventurous journey 
towards building this crazy instrument, don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.